Good evening, everybody. How y'all doing out there in Facebook land? All over this beautiful, wonderful universe, this globe in the continent of Africa, the continent of Asia, um, all these other different continents, the Antarctic and, and the, the UK and, and all over. Listen, I bring you greetings from the kingdom of God and uh, good to be with you on this wonderful Thursday evening. And uh, as always, hope you had a wonderful day and uh, hope you've been anticipating our time together. And uh, if you join us for the first time, I want to welcome you uh, to the Successfully You Broadcast nightly seminar, Monday through Thursday night. We are here doing our nightly seminar slash Bible study uh, teaching, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we're here for you to hear, to help you on your journey of being successful you. And that's what it's all about. It's about us learning how to be successfully who God created us to be, how to discover your original uniqueness, how to live as you was created and not as you were born. And uh, so tonight, 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 we're gonna bring uh, this portion uh, to a close on tonight. That's the plan and uh, uh, that we've been talking about the types of hearers and uh, we've been talking about the third type of here. And so hopefully tonight we're gonna, we're gonna bring to close this third type so we can move on to the fourth type of hero and uh, that we all been eagerly waiting for and anticipating. But I hope you've been learning as we've been on this journey. And, uh, and I believe this is our 11th broadcast on this particular subject about a worry hero. How, uh, what makes you a, a worry hero? What makes you have a worry mentality? We've spent the last seven broadcasts talking about that. And listen, if that ain't been enough to help you, then I don't know what else to do, but to continue to pray for you. And then, you know what? Keep teaching the word. And so I believe at some point, we all gonna get this in the way we need to get it. And, uh, and so if you would, so kindly go ahead and share, like our page, subscribe, do whatever you need to do to get the word out, pass the word out. Thank those of you who support us on a weekly basis, monthly basis, who are here each and every week. Uh, whether you're here one time, two times, or four or five times, however you're here, I want to thank you uh, for joining us. And uh, and I hope you're sharing this with others as well. You know, let me get my little screen here together here. I hope you're sharing. There we go. Uh, sharing my camera got a little off there. Uh, sharing this broadcast with others. And uh, because I hope it's been a blessing to you, it's, as it's been a blessing to me to be here to teach and to share with you. So tonight, we're going to get right into it. Let's do our success for you confession, and then we'll get right into our lesson. That's okay. So let me push a few buttons here to share my screen. And we're going to bring up our success for you confession. And uh, we're going to set the atmosphere, get our minds together, and to hear and receive the word of God. And as you see on the screen, let's say this together. Let's confess this together. And the reason we confess this is because our minds need to hear our mouths speaking the truth of God concerning our lives because it has an impact on the way we think and how our mind develop. That's why we do this confession. So together, repeat after me. I am highly treasured and favored of God. I have a healthy respect for myself. I am a spirit being possessing a mind and living in a healthy human body. I am blessed with the seed of greatness and God's character and ability lives within me, causing me to excel in every area of my life. Through the power of love and forgiveness, I am freed from all emotional hurt, fantasies, fear, and strife, which will no longer rob me of my happiness and forward progress in life. Therefore, I take full responsibility for who I am and what I shall become. Upon the principles and wisdom of life, Will I delight and meditate day and night? My thought life is being renewed and my purpose, my true purpose for living is being revealed. On this day and forevermore, I declare that I am whole, I am fulfilled, I am happy. Come on, say it with me. I am successful to me. Amen, that's the objective, that's the goal because I believe that's the mission of the Holy Spirit in your life and my life that we live as God created us and not as we were born in sin. So therefore you can live successfully you. Listen, everything 
that's created is very possible and, uh, and very achievable for it to live as it was created. Let me ask you a question. For those of you that are still not convinced that you can live as you was created and you can be successful in you. Let me ask this question. Do you ever doubt a flying bird and his ability to fly? No. Have you ever seen a bird go to flight school? No. What was the bird designed to do? Fly. And so when he flies, he's been successful. It's natural, it's innate, it's built within the bird. Okay, still ain't convinced? All right, got a bicycle. What's the objective of that bicycle? To ride it from point A to point B or wherever you need to go. And if you're able to do that with the bicycle, then it's fulfilling its purpose. It's being successful because that's what it's designed to do. The bicycle was not designed to fly, no matter how much you want it to fly. So the point of being is this, when everything functions as it was created, then it is being successfully what it is. If the animals can be what, who they are, and you have no doubt of that, they being who they are by nature, they're being successful because they were, they're living as they were created. Well, what make you think that's not possible for you? What make you think that's not possible for people? You got to understand something. When anything functions as it was created, then it's being successfully what it is. Well, so that tells me if you and I can learn to live as we were created, then there's no doubt, then it's guaranteed that you will live and you will be successfully you. That's why I'm so dogmatic about this because there's too much truth around us that verify, confirms, and, and solidifies the fact that you and I can live as we, we were created and we can live successfully who God created us to be. Amen. All right. We've been talking about the law of the mind and specifically we've been talking about uh, the gateway of the mind. And in this study about the gateway of the mind, we've learned from Jesus teaching in one of his parables that there's four types of mentalities, which means there are four types of hearers, amen. There's four possible ways uh, that you use your ears to hear. And that's based upon your mentality. I'm not gonna go back over all of that. And uh, you gotta go back and look at the replay, but let me just mention what they are and then we're gonna jump in on number three. We said the first type of hearer and the first type of mindset is the wayside mindset, the wayside hearer, the one who hears, but it falls by the wayside because they're not ready to obey. They're not ready to be doers. They still stuck in just being hearers. All right, number two, the second type of hearer, the second type of mindset is the uh, uh, shallow mindset, the shallow hearer. This is the person who hear the word, love to hear the word, but listen, as soon as trouble hit, you can't find them. Why? Because the word has no root in them and they have no root in the word. And when there's no root, guess what? You got it. There's no fruit. So write that down. When there's no root, there will be no fruit. That's the way that works. That's the second type of hearer. The third type of hearer is the one we on tonight. It is the worry hearer. And so I'm gonna come back to that one. And the finally, the fourth type of hearer is the healthy hearer. And it's called good ground. The seed fell in good ground. And you'll find this in Matthew chapter 13, starting verse 18 uh, through 24, where Jesus is explaining, explaining the parable. And, uh, but it starts actually in the verse chapter, verse number one. And uh, when he tells the parable, then verse number 18, he starts explaining each part of the parable. And so we either are a wayside hearer, a shallow hearer, a worry hearer, or a healthy hearer. Tonight, we're going to work to conclude the teaching on what makes one a worry hearer. I gave you seven things. I'm not going to go over those seven things tonight, unfortunately. You got to go back and look at the, the replay from yesterday to get those seven things that makes one a, a worry hearer. But the seventh one, which I'm going to focus on tonight, and, and, and uh, uh, I will share again tonight, and then I told you I'm going to help you, what is that we must do to free ourselves 
from the power and the influence of worry that finds itself establishing a stronghold in our lives. And, uh, and so, so we said that the seventh thing was this. The seventh thing was when you have your perceived personal security in life from your riches and not from the word of God, that's going to make you a worry hearer and give you a worry mentality. People who think that their security can be found in their riches and their wealth, their position, the, the, their possessions and, and the people they know and the places they go and, and, and position they hold in life. None of these things are secure because they all can be gone at any moment. So there's no security in none of that. The only true security, as we discover in the word, that is the word of God. And so go with me, Proverbs chapter eight, that we've learned that wisdom, the wisdom that comes from the word of God, the wisdom of God, is the cure for a worry mentality. See, because the number one thing that we worry about as we learn is finances, riches, and wealth. Our society everywhere is consumed with this. And it's also in the church. So in Jesus' parable, he's talking, listen, he's talking about people in the kingdom. So he's telling you that there's, there's four, four basic primary mentality Mindsets of people in the kingdom. You either a wayside mentality, you either have a shallow mentality, or you have a worry mentality, or a healthy mentality. And we're going to get to that next week. We're going to talk about the healthy mentality. Excuse me. The healthy hero. Let me take me a swig of water. Okay, this ain't no gin. Like, it, you know, it may look like some of y'all. It's, it's just what it says, essential water. All right. Oh, now that's better. That's better. That's better. Sometimes I talk myself dry and choke myself talking so fast. But anyway, Proverbs, give you time to get to Proverbs chapter eight. Won't you understand that wisdom is the cure and the antidote for worry, the worries that you have in life about your children, about money, about your spouse, about your job, about your health, about your ministry, your, your, your members, whatever you're worrying about. You need to stop it because you got to consider worry what it is, sin. Anything that destroys you and destroys your body has to be sin. And it is sin because worry is the fruit of fear. It's a baby of fear. Fear gives birth to worry. Now, listen, everybody encounters worry and you will encounter worry maybe every day. But it don't mean you have to embrace it and subscribe to it. That don't make you a worrier. See, we all get challenged by worry. We all have the opportunity to worry. But the moment you have an opportunity to worry, that's your cue to, for the word of God to kick in in your life. That's your cue, your signal to lean on the word of God. All right? And so we learn that, the, that, the, that there are people who lean on their riches. They lean on their riches. They have confidence in their riches. And the word of God says, if you lean on, trust in, and have confidence in your riches, you shall fall. That's what the word says. See, and we don't want that to happen. See, I don't want that to happen to you or anybody else. See, you got to understand that you're, and, and I'm looking for something while I'm talking here, something just came to my mind. I want, I want to look at it and, uh, and see if I want to read it uh, or not. Uh, but yeah, Proverbs, I told you to turn to Proverbs 8, right? Keep your hand right there. But I just want to show you again and repeat Proverbs chapter 11, verse 28. Because I just quoted and it came, so the Holy Spirit told me to read it again. Put your eyes on it again. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 20 says, he who leans on, trust in and is confident in his riches shall fall. That's what the word said. But watch this. But the uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish like a green bow tree. So that means this. You got to choose, you got to choose to trust in riches or trust in the righteousness of God. See? 
You don't have to choose between the two because God wants you to have both. But what you do have to choose is which one you're going to trust. Let me say it again. You do not have to choose between righteousness and riches because our Heavenly Father wants us to have both because you need both in this life. However, you do have to choose which one going to be first. Well, it says if you lean on, trust in, have confidence in riches, you shall fall. Well, if you don't want to fall, duh, then it makes sense. Don't choose riches first. Choose righteousness first. Why? Because it says, he who choose righteousness shall flourish like a tall, strong standing, uh, uh, what? What kind of tree is it? Uh, green bow tree. So you, do you want to, listen, in the end, do you want to be standing tall and strong and stable? Then trust Rich, trust righteousness first. Choose to put righteousness before riches. And you will have riches if you trust in righteousness. All right, Proverbs 8, look at it. Look what, look what, look what wisdom says. Wisdom says this. See, wisdom says this. Uh, verse number 10 and 11. Receive my instructions in preference to striving for silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For skillful and godly wisdom is better than rubies and riches and pearls. And all the things that you may desire are not to be compared to it. So that tells you wisdom is more important than riches and wealth. Tangible riches and wealth. But you got to convince yourself of that. You got to believe that. You got to receive that. And until you do, you're going to always worry about physical riches and wealth. But the wealth of wisdom will produce the wealth of money and the wealth of, of all kind of possession that you need to accommodate your life as you fulfill the kingdom purpose for your life. You've got to believe that. You got to trust. You got to trust the word. Now let's keep reading on. Proverbs chapter 8. Skip over to verse number 17. I it says this. I'm reading the Amplified verse. It says, I love those who love me and those who seek me early and diligently, excuse me, shall find me. Verse 18, riches and honor are with me. What does wisdom have with it? Wisdom and honor are with me. So you can't have wisdom and not eventually have riches and honor. Wow. And that's what everybody wants. Riches and honor. Well, wisdom says, I know you need that. And God designed me to give that to you. But you've got to put me first. You've got to love me and not money. See, it's the love of money that is the root of all evil. We were not designed to love money. We were designed to love the maker of money. That is God and his wisdom. God uses wisdom to create riches and wealth. Let me say it again. God uses his wisdom to create riches and wealth. So if you seek wisdom, you'll find riches and wealth and honor and long life. Who doesn't want that? And don't have to worry about failing. Don't have to worry about uh, uh, worrying about things. So if you want to replace worry, then you've got to subscribe to wisdom. Write that down. To replace worry in your mind, you've got to subscribe to wisdom because wisdom is greater than anything in your life and it's not to be compared to anything that you can desire. Let's finish reading here. Verse number 18 says, riches and honor are with me. Enduring wealth and righteousness, meaning right relations, uprightness in every area and relations and right standing with God. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than refined gold, and my increase than choice silver. I, wisdom, walk in the way of righteousness, moral and spiritual rectitude in every area and in every relation in the midst of the path of justice that I may cause those, watch this now. Look at this verse 21. Here's what Wim says, Wim says that I may cause those who love me, 
who love wisdom. Wisdom says, I will cause those who love me to inherit true riches and that I may fill their treasures. You know that word treasures there is? That's like a chest. That's a place that holds your precious good, that holds your, hold your money, whatever. Let me tell you, what in, in modern term, that word treasure refers to your bank account and your wallet, your purse, wherever, your pillow, your mattress, wherever you keep your money. Wisdom said, if you will love me and if you will pursue me early, what does early mean? It means before you make a decision, not after you make a decision. Before you marry, not after you marry. Don't just wait till after you marry. You need to seek wisdom even after you marry, but you need to start before you marry. See, before you make a business decision, wisdom says, seek me. Before you set about a plan, seek me. Before you decide to go do this, seek me. Seek me early and diligently. Love me and those that find me. He said, I will, I will reward them with true riches. They shall inherit. They shall inherit. Now listen to where it says, you shall inherit. Inherit means you don't have to work for it. Wow. Wisdom says, I will put in the work on your behalf if you put in the work of pursuing me. Are you hearing me tonight? You got to receive. I'm trying to set you free from a worry mentality. See, I'm trying to get you your freedom. You've been delivered from everything that has to do with sin. And worry is a part of sin. You've already been delivered from it. Now I'm trying to get you free. What does that mean? Delivered means the price has been paid. It has been defeated. Freedom means now you got to learn to live it out, walk it out, and apply it to your life. That's what freedom is. Until you learn to apply the word of God to your life, you're not free. Which means I'm talking to save people that are bound, that are in mental prisons of worry, fear, doubt, unbelief, and torment. Wondering about your life. But wisdom says, I've got your answer. If you fall in love with wisdom, worry will no longer feel welcome in your life. Oh my God, you better hear that. You better receive that. Come on, reach out and receive that. Say, I receive that. Let me say it again. When you fall in love with wisdom, worry will no longer be welcome in your life. When you fall in love with wisdom, worry will know he don't love me, she don't love me, no, she don't like me no more. Worry will no longer feel welcome and comfortable in your life when you fall in love with the wisdom of God. And we're going to explain what that is here in a minute. See, when you fall in love with the wisdom of God, then and only then will you get free from a life of worry about anything. That's why I love the word of God, because the word of God has caused to emerge in my life, the wisdom of God. Please hear that. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is the way God lives in his world. Let me say it again. The wisdom of God, this, this is my first definition. I've got many, many key definitions to, to the word wisdom of God, but I'm, I'm gonna give you this first one right here. The wisdom of God is simply the way God lives in his world. And he said, you know what? I made you like me. That like I live in my world, you can live the same way in your world on the earth. Oh my God. Now that ain't excited. That's, that's shouting material right there. That right now, that deserve a, Lord, I thank you. That deserve a praise right there. That the father wants you and I to live in our world, on the earth, the way he lives in his world, in heaven. Remember Luke chapter 12, verse 32? It says, it's the father's good pleasure 
to give you the kingdom. And then Luke 17, verse 21, say, don't look outside of you. Don't look around. He said, but the kingdom is within you. The father wants you to live a kingdom life in the earth. And there ain't nothing broke. There ain't nothing lacking. There ain't nothing busted nor disgusted in a kingdom life. I don't know about you, but every day I'm pursuing to live a kingdom life. Because a kingdom life starts with receiving the father into your life and then allowing him to teach you how to think like the king himself, how to see things like the king himself, how to process things like the king himself, how to live like the king himself. And when you begin to operate and function like the king himself, how can you dare worry? There ain't no way. So worry means we're not thinking like the father, who is the king. We're not seeing things the way the father sees it. We're not doing things the way the father do does it. We're not approaching it the way the father approaches. it. And so therefore we left to worry because worry means this. You're trying to do it in your own strength and might. And what did the Bible say in Zechariah 4? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Are you tired of trying to do it by your power and by your might? It's time to do it by the spirit of God. It's time to yield and release the weight of your life to the father, just like he always told us to, because worry means you're trying to carry the weight of your life, your way by yourself. Simple as that. See, you cannot carry your life your way. Did you not know that the life that we were created to live, we can't live it on our own. It requires the assistance of our father by his Holy Spirit that empowers us to live the victorious kingdom life that is ours to have. You are a king in the earth. That's what the word of God says. We are kings of the kingdom. My God. Yes. That's what the word of God says. See, you got to believe the word. And as you believe the word, your mind starts leaning on the word. Your mind starts trusting in the word. Your mind has confidence in the word. And when your mind is leaning, trusting, and have confidence in the word, guess what? Then and only then will your mind be free from the sin of worry. Yes, call it what it is. Worry is a sin. Anytime I choose to worry, I'm choosing to mentally sin against God. And I don't want to do that. That's why David said this. He said, your word. Psalms 119, let me, let me get it for you so you can, you can write it down. Psalms 119, verse what, y'all? Verse number 11. He says, thy word have I hid in my heart. That is, the word heart, that means mind. Thy word have I hid in my mind. Why? That I might not sin against you. Woo! Did you not know that physical sin does not take place until you mentally sin first. Every physical sin that you and I have ever participated in, we first sin mentally first. Worry is a mental sin. And therefore every mental sin will cause you to have a physical, literal sin action. Which means if you keep worrying, you're going to keep struggling with sin in your life. You worry about money, that's why you sin when it comes to money. You worry about your job, your, your health, that's why you sin when it comes to why. Because worry is a mental sin. And when you have mental sin, it's only a matter of time. You're going to physically carry it out. Somebody say, Father, thank you for that, that word right there. I receive that. I got it. I understand it. And forgive me for mentally sinning because now I know why I keep doing things I don't want to do. See, that's what Paul was talking about in Romans chapter 7. He said, why is it 
that I keep doing things that I don't want to do. And then he finally discovered, you got it, the law of his mind. He said, because I realize that there's a law of God in me. There's a law of sin in my flesh. And then there's a law of my mind. He understood there was a breakdown in the law of his mind, which means he had allowed things to get in his mind that was preventing him from fulfilling what was in him spiritually. See, spiritually, you are a king. But mentally, you think like a servant and a slave and a peasant. You think like a bag of a bag of bomb. See? But spiritually, you are a king. And when you start thinking mentally as you are spiritually, guess what, y'all? Then you're gonna start living physically accordingly. So that means our physical life that we are living is a result of our mental life. And our mental life is a result or what we understand and believe about ourselves spiritually. I am a king. Don't hate, participate and celebrate. See, cause you are a king as well. And I've discovered it and I'm trying to help you do the same. Your situation has nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it at all. See, so the word of God is what's gonna help us free ourselves from the stronghold and the power of worry. Look what wisdom says, watch this. We're still in Proverbs chapter eight. Proverbs chapter eight, verse 21 says, that I may cause those who love me to inherit true riches, that I may fill their bank accounts, that I may fill their wallets, that I may fill their purses, that I may fill wherever they keep their money. I will fill it up with money. Why? Because to do kingdom, you can't be broke. You've got to have money because things cost money. Stop thinking money is evil. No, it's the love of money that's evil. And if anybody tell you having money is evil and having a lot of it makes you arrogant, whatever, no. Remember, pride and arrogance. And 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 uh, what's the other words? Um, 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 bougie and and uppity. Those are a matter of choice. If you become bougie when you get a lot of money, that means you were bougie in the first place. You just didn't have enough money to act like you were. But now you got a little money. Now you choose to act like what you've always thought. So it's not money that makes people. Money exposes people. Simple as that. The Bible said it like this. If you are unfaithful, when you have little money, you'll also be faithful when you have much money. See, it's not the amount of money that makes you faithful or unfaithful. It's the way you think already. Money just exposes who you are. So whatever you are with little money, that's what you'll be with a lot of money. So watch this. If you wanna be liberal, when you got a lot, be liberal when you have a little. So right now, you can change the way you think. And then you can project what you're going to be once you make it, once things get better for you. See? Tell me, you know, you know, some people say, oh, man, when they got money, they got mean. They got ugly. Man, they, they just got rude. No, they were already mean. They were already ugly. They were already rude. They just didn't have enough money to give them the courage to act like what they already were. But it's something about money that gives you a false sense of security, make you act the fool that you already always have been. Because you feel like you got enough money to act the fool. And what people gonna do? Cause I got money, I can buy my way out, I can pay them off or whatever the case may be. But that's a false sense of security. And the Bible said, as I read it to you, if you trust in, lean on, have confidence in your riches, you shall fall. Not maybe, not can, shall fall. So I want to ask you the question. Are you on the verge of falling? You say, how do I know? Do you trust in your money? 
Do you lean on your money? Do you have confidence in your money? Which means, is it your money and the amount of money you have that drives your decisions in life? That determines who you hang out with in life? Then you are leaning on your money. And you know what? When money leaves, you're going to fall. That's why you fall, because you're leaning on it. But if you ain't leaning on it and money leaves your life, guess what? You're going to still be standing. Why? Because you were standing firm when you had it. So you're going to stand firm if it leaves. See? How do you learn to do that? That's what you got to learn to do. See? Watch this. Verse number 22 says, the wisdom says, the Lord formed me and brought me wisdom forth at the beginning of his way. Before his acts of old, I wisdom was, in, was inaugurated and ordained from everlasting from the beginning before ever the earth existed. See, in other words, wisdom is saying this. Everything that God did in the earth, when you look at Genesis chapter one, the days of creation, God used wisdom to create everything he created, which means he used wisdom when he created the sun, moon, and the stars, the plants, the oceans, and the mountains, when he created the animals, and when he created man. Everything that God created in this earth was created by the knowledge and understanding of the wisdom of God. Now, if God used the wisdom of God to create everything he created in this world, doesn't it make sense for you and I to use the same thing as we live in this world, this wisdom created world, this wisdom created universe? This universe operates on the basis of the wisdom of God. Watch this. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter one. If you don't believe me, Hebrews chapter one, I want to show you another passage uh, that backs up Proverbs chapter eight. Hebrews chapter one, I believe it is. Let me get there real quickly, real quickly, real quickly. Because we're running out of time. We're running out of time. We're running out of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch this. Hebrews chapter one, verse one, two, and three. It says, God, who had sun dry times and in divers manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Talking about Jesus, who is, according to John 1 and 1, is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word is God. So by the word of God, created everything that he created. It. And he holds it together by the power of his word. Look at verse number three. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. The universe and everything in it is held together by the power of God's word, which in practice is called the wisdom of God. So the wisdom of God is simply the word of God at work in your life. Oh, my goodness. Man, there's some good stuff here. I don't know about y'all, but I'm doing myself. The wisdom of God is simply the word of God in action. Anybody that's not applying the word of God in their life, that, that's being foolish. Yes. Let's call it what it is. See? Wisdom said, listen, God used me to do everything he did. And I want to encourage you to go read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, where Paul talks about that, the contrast of the wisdom of God versus the wisdom of men. The wisdom of men is simply the wisdom of Lucifer. Because that's where man got it from. See? Lucifer always try to counter God. So he took 
the knowledge and intelligence that God gave him and he polluted it and thereby with the permission of man created what is called the wisdom of man and the wisdom of man the Bible says is from beneath the wisdom of God is from above the wisdom of men simply comes from the pits of hell but the wisdom of God comes from the palace of heaven now, which one you think is best to use? Do you want to live a heavenless, a hellish life? Or do you want to live a heavenly life on the earth? If you want to live a heavenly life, then I encourage you and I remind you, it can only be done by using the wisdom of God. But if you want to continue to live a hellish life in your relationship, in your money, your job, in any other area of your life, then you keep using the wisdom of men. See? But if you lean on the wisdom of God, you will never fail. Because the wisdom of God will always lead you down the path of righteousness. And we learn that righteousness is simply God's way of thinking, God's way of being, and God's way of doing. And that results into God's way of living. How many want to live like God? How many want to live like your heavenly father? Worry free. He don't worry about us because he trusts in his own worry. You think God worry about you? That's why he told us to do this, y'all. Turn with me to Philippians chapter four. Philippians chapter four. Watch this. Philippians chapter four. He tells us to do this in Philippians chapter four. Watch this, y'all. He said, Be, do not fret. I'm reading the Amplified Version. Do not fret or have any anxiety, any worry. Somebody say, no worry. See, why would the word of God tell you don't have any worry if you can't have any worry? That means it's possible to live without worry. We done got so used to stuff we think we can't live without it. We don't got so used to stuff that's killing us that we don't like, that we don't want, that's hurting us, that we can't. We think we can't live without it. Yes, you can live without worry. You got to choose to, but you'll never choose it until you first learn that it's possible. And I'm reading to you, showing you that it's possible that you and I can live worry-free. See, worry-free don't mean you don't care about things. It don't mean you don't have concern. It means you don't get out of bounds with it. It means you don't try to carry it by yourself. Because worry simply means you're trying to carry it without God. Or you're trying to carry it as though you are God and you don't need him. That's why you worry. Are you ready to share the load? That's what we read it. We read in, in um, Matthew chapter 11, what Jesus said, all of you that are heavy laden, come unto me and do what? Learn of me. My yoke is easy. The word yoke means my partnership. Draw with me. My responsibility that I put upon you is easy. And he said, my burden it's like, you're going to have to carry a load, but it's going to feel light. You know why? Because he's going to carry it with you, and he's going to bear the weight. He'll carry it where you don't feel the weight. Wow. Are you hearing me? See, the Father has great ministry for you. And when you look at it, it looks impossible. And if you, and, and if you weigh it, it's very heavy. But watch this. It ain't heavy when you're carrying it with Father God. See, if I were carrying this ministry and all that I'm doing every day by myself, it would be too much for me. But because I carry it with my Father, he carries the heaviest part. I just stay engaged, stay connected, and keep doing my part. And together, we carry this vision to touch the world with the gospel of the kingdom of God. I know what he told me to do. And listen, and if I told you some of the things he told me to do, 
you would say, hi, now where are you planning to do that? You know why you say that? Because you're just looking at me. You're not thinking about the father. See, it's not dependent upon me. All I've got to do is trust him, obey him, and together we'll do what seems to be impossible. Because with God, all things are possible, even the impossible. Did you not know that the impossible is possible? Look at the word impossible. The second half of the word is possible. The first half of the word is I am, which is short for I am. So impossible means this, anything that you do with God, though it seems impossible, it becomes possible. Are you ready to do the impossible? Yes. It seems to be impossible to be you. It seems to be impossible with the people that are around you, where you live, and how you brought up, what you got to deal with. It seems impossible. Without God, you're absolutely right. But with him, all things become possible. I don't care how long you've been sick. Healing is possible. I don't care how long you've been broke. Wealth and riches are possible. I don't care how long you've been angry. I don't care how long you've been hurt. Listen, peace, joy, and happiness is possible. But I got to get you to believe the truth. Look what he says here. He said, be anxious for nothing. Listen, do not fret or have anxiety about anything. That includes your children. That includes your spouse. That includes your ministry. That includes your health. That includes everything. He said, do not be worried about anything, but in everything, in every circumstances, and in everything, do what, y'all? By prayer and petition, definite requests, specific requests, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants and requests known to God. Not because he needs to know them. He needs to know that you trust him for them. Let me say it again. This is not telling you to reveal your wants to God because he already knows. He's telling you, remind God, not because he's forgot, but he likes to hear it, that you are leaning on him. You trust him for the things you need and want in life. And that you believe he's already done it. I believe he's already done it. Watch this. And watch this. And what's going to happen? When you start trusting the Father for everything in every circumstance, and you stop worrying about anything, verse number seven says, and God's peace shall be yours. <laughs> that tranquil state of a soul assured of his salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God and being content with his earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace which transcends all understanding shall guard and garrison over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. He said, listen, when you discover this power of the wisdom of God and how he's already provided for you before you ever knew you had a need and even while you in need, if you remind him that you trust him by thanking him for supplying what you don't already have. See, you don't have it in your possession physically, but you're going to go before the father and thank him for it. Let him know, father, I don't have it in my pocket. I don't have it in my hand, but it's in my life because you've already blessed me with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Concerning life and godliness, I have everything by your divine power. That's what your, your prayer should be about. Not begging him, but thanking him and believing him. And then watch the manifestation. But watch the first thing that's going to happen is the peace of God is going to begin to overtake your mind. Which means when you begin to worship the Father for what he's already done for you, worry 
will have to make a grand exit out of your life, out of your way of thinking. And then what's going to happen? That's going to be a grand entrance of the peace of God that passes all understanding, which means this peace won't make sense. Ooh. My God, my God. This peace won't seem to fit your situation. What do you mean by that, Pastor? That means you'll be in trouble, bad situation, but still find yourself at peace. How is that possible? When your spouse ain't acting right, your children ain't acting right, your money acting funny, and members are acting funny, the preacher acting funny, acting funny on the job, why is it that you at such peace? It's because the peace of God has made a grand entrance into my life. And I find myself unexplainably, I don't understand it, calm, cool, and collected, even in the midst of the fire. Why? Because the same God that was in the lion's den with David, with Daniel rather, is the one that's going to give you that same peace. How is it that, that the man can be in a, a, den of, a den of lion, of hungry lions, and be at peace? Because he wasn't in there by himself, y'all. How is it that Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, and that bad Negro, okay, I know it says, and Benigo, all right, can be in the midst of a fire and not be concerned because they say we in the fire by the hand of the king. But our king, who lives in our heart, is in this fire with us. It's not a big thing. Why? Because our father is bigger, more powerful than the fire. That he cooled off the fire. Oh, my goodness. How can that be? The peace of God. That passes all understanding. So you got to stop trying to live this life that you can always understand everything. That's what making you worry. You're trying to understand and figure out everything. Stop trying to figure it out and start walking by faith. Faith it out. Stop figuring it out. So write this down. Say, Father, I'm going to stop trying to figure it out. And I'm going to start faithing it out. I'm going to go when I don't understand because I trust you. <laughs> my, my, my. See, that's what this is all about. And listen, y'all, I thought I was going to get finished tonight. And guess what? I didn't because there's a lot more I wanted to give you about this. And I promise you, I'm going to end this thing at some point. But it's so good. So much come up that I didn't plan that I don't get to what I plan. But listen, it's all good. Because look what he says. He said, I want you to be content in whatever, with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace which transcend all understanding shall come in and guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And then here's what you got to do, y'all. Verse number eight. For the rest, brethren, after that, here's what I want you to do. Whatsoever is true, whatsoever is worthy of reverence, whatsoever uh, uh, are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. In other words, take your mind off of stuff that ain't doing you no good, that's destroying you, and put your mind on things that's going to help you, that's going to empower you, that's going to give you strength, things that are worthy of praise, things that are of a virtue, things that will cause you to excel, things that will cause you to be thankful, things that will cause you to give God praise, things that will remind you of how awesome you are in him. 
things that remind you that you are a king. And listen, you got to understand your circumstances will always tell you a lie about yourself. Let me say that again. Your circumstances will always tell you a lie about yourself. Bad circumstances and good circumstances. Let me tell you something. If you listen to your circumstances, they will always lie to you. Let me give you an example. If you got bad circumstances, they'll always tell you, you ain't gonna make it. You're gonna die. This is gonna kill you. They're gonna hate you. Even if you got good circumstances, you know what they'll tell you? Good circumstances tell you, man, you better than them. Man, you, you something. See, good circumstances, if you listen to them, they'll give you the wrong attitude about yourself. They'll make you powerful. They'll make you haughty and arrogant. Just like negative circumstances will give you a poor mentality, a negative mentality. So, so then, preacher, what should I listen to? Listen to the word of God and the word of God only. Because the word of God will always tell you the truth that it may give you life, that it may raise you up. That's what you got to do. It's the word of God. Listen to that. Listen, I'm out of time, but we're going to pick up right back right here again in Philippians chapter four, because I got something else I want to show you in this text that you got to see, you got to hear, but you got to come back on Monday. We'll be back on next Monday talking about the same thing. And I promise you then we're going to wrap this piece up so we can move on to the healthy mentality and the healthy hero. I apologize that I didn't get to the end of it this time. I try. But listen, it's all good. We'll be back. Listen, if the word of God has been a blessing to you this week, I want to give you this opportunity to sow a financial seed into this ministry. On the screen right here are ways that you can sow into the ministry. You can do Givelify, Zelle, Cash App, PayPal, go on our website, whatever the case may be. Sow a seed of appreciation and thanksgiving of this word of God. Let it be a testimony to prove that you're no longer worrying about finances. That I'm going to start sowing into this ministry on a monthly basis to prove to myself and to God I'm going to activate the principle of wisdom of sowing, showing that I'm free from financial worry. Because listen, this ministry and this teaching have helped you find that freedom, then listen, it's only right, it's only a blessing, only a privilege and honor to sow a seed in response. Do that this week, sow a seed. And listen, the other opportunity I want to give you, that if you don't know Jesus Christ in a personal way, I know you go to church, probably singing the choir, you may be even preaching. That don't mean you're saved. I'm not saying you're not. But if you got any doubt, any hesitation, you're not sure, then let's make it sure. How do you do that? The Bible says you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. So right where you are, I want you to say, Father, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I bring my life and my sin of life to you, and I ask you to forgive me for rejecting you as Lord and Savior of my life. Forgive me for reject, rejecting you as a source of my life and thinking that something else, myself included, is the source of life. But I realize that you are the source of life now, that I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for me, and they paid the full price, and I accept his full payment on my behalf. And I accept his finished work of forgiving me for sin and giving me power over sin. And so I accept him in my life, in my heart as Lord and Savior, and I confess him as my Savior, my Lord, and my Father right now in Jesus' name. You prayed that prayer, and you believe that in your heart. I want to welcome you to the family of God. And listen, and I want to give you an opportunity to be a part of this ministry. Let me be your pastor. Let me be your mentor. Let me be your, your seminar facilitator, whatever the case may be, where we can help you on this journey to live successful to you. Send us an email. It's on the screen right there. Send us an email let us know that you gave your life to Christ and we'll help you on this journey. We'll connect with you. All we want for you is what God wants for you.
We don't want money from you. We want things from you. We want to get life to you and let nothing get in the way of doing that. Won't you be so kind to do that? Let us know. Let us hear from you that the word of God has led you to Christ. The word of God is doing something in your life. And if you're already saved, y'all send me emails. Let me know what the word of God is doing for your life. Let us hear from you. It'd be so kind to do that. Thank those of you who do reach out to us and tell us how the word, the Bible study, the seminar, the lessons been a blessing to you. And listen, and I pray they continue to be so as well. So again, thank you for joining us tonight and allowing us to be your teacher, your facilitator, your preacher, your pastor. I bless you and I appreciate you. Love you. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you on Monday. Same place, same time. And remember, live as you was created, not as you're born. And it is possible for you to live successfully. You, you got to believe that because it's true. God bless you. Y'all have a great night, great weekend. We'll see you next time. Take care.